Isaiah 64 verse 8 But now, O Lord, thou art our father We are the clay and thou our porter And we all are the work of thy hand As the porter molds the clay So God has been molding an earthen vessel For about 60 years God's word is a runner Once it is spoken, it runs And if I be a man of God Serving under this commission, God's war shall be performed in your life. David Olatunji Abioyi is one who has enjoyed the grace and mercy of God since that 11th day of March 1961 when he was born. Born into a religious yet godly family, his parents feared God. Olorun ona David omo abioye sinu idili abioye gege bi omo toto gege bi eni ti Olorun lo ninu odile gege bi eni ti Olorun o fi soke ninu odile David omo abioye Olatunji Olorun ona sinu odile abioye ibi won o rorun gan ko si wa ala kan kan pe alako bi bi omo ina le ni mo bi si ko si wa ala kan kan ko si si parapa kan kan titi ta fi toju re ti olorun fi se olu toju ilu ta bi won si na ni gana akotia ninu ile ti omo iyan lo ko ile yi o je le rent through the faith of my biological father who was very committed um, I watched him over the years uh, praying fasting and, uh, and a deep student of the Bible he had opportunity to even uh, oversee the affairs of a local church Beyond his parents' teachings of the love for God, David showed attributes of being a good boy himself. What was more fascinating was the characteristics of a natural leader he displayed from an early age. <laughs> ti david o ma bi oye to ne ninu aye re fun awa obi o je omo adun nu omo alaafia titi to fi dagba to fi to lati ma lo si ile eko o si wa ala kan kan fun ra re lo mora ti so pe owo lo si ile eko we even discovered that he would bring some of his provisions from school back home to come and share with us, the younger ones. He wasn't a lazy person. Domestically, he was dutiful. And I saw that at the later stage of childhood in Ilori. In the house, we were with daddy. But that David was the gardener. I was privileged to go to government secondary school in Lauren and I was just 13 years old at that point in time. Our father was not all that chance to be checking on me, but we were always checking every time before the midterm, after the midterm, we were always there checking on me. And each time you you visited, you were always issuing out blessings, giving money and material things, textbooks and all of that. And not only that, each time you were not privileged or chance to come, you always sent uh, letters and closed there in good amount of money. I never bothered to even read through the letters. I just tried to check if anything was enclosed. And in most cases, I was never disappointed. One of the things that was like a standing point for him growing up uh, from those early days is the fact that 
Uh, David Abiyoye is being a servant leader. This was before the concept of servant leadership became, you know, popular. He exemplifies servant leadership even before the world came to begin to talk about servant leadership. David had the privilege of an early education and also a higher education. Initially, I drove passionately towards studying architecture. Um, back then, in my secondary school, I was having great time in the techno, uh, technical subject, particularly in technical drawing. I had no problem studying it. As a matter of fact, I hardly studied it. I just got passionate and I was uh, the first in my class in that subject. So I set to my mind to study um, architecture. And by the grace of God, I had what was being required. I was to, my first choice was University of Onsuka. And um, somehow, in those days, you don't have to meet anybody to seek admission and all of that. So, but somehow, by a divine provision, I couldn't get into that. So when upon uh, seeking admission in the uh, Tech, as we used to call it in those days, I was still uh, in pursuit of uh, study of architecture. And um, several issues came up that didn't allow me to do that, so I opted for automobile engineering. Religiosity was not equivalent to knowing God on a personal level and David sought to have a deeper relationship with God and trust our God. He wants nothing more for us than to know him more. The opportunity of knowing God better presented itself to young David and he grabbed it with both hands. In 1977, January 9th to be precise, uh, upon resuming back to school, for a new term, uh, a day before resumption, there was a neighboring um, high institution where a crusade was being held. And I was invited there. <clears throat> and um, that was where I encountered the Lord shortly before my age 16. I knew there was a tangible experience. Even though I uh, till this moment I can't remember what message was preached but I knew there was a conviction for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them God has been preparing the servant in advance and when the time came he called him out of the many to become one of the chosen. I met God's servant Bishop That was in January 1980. Um, before then, as mentioned earlier, I had been born again um, and I was committed in the Baptist, um, very specifically in the Emmanuel Baptist Church in Sabuki. And I had learned you know the way of the evangelicals which has to do with reaching out to people and soul winning and all of that and gradually grew into the pentecostal uh, where people believe in the gift of the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues so there was a burning zeal in me as a young man then and then in the process i met with bishop Wedupo. Uh, and the kind of zeal I saw in him was the upcoming one in me. So naturally, there was a tie. I haven't studied automobile engineering. I wanted to establish a high-tech automobile uh, company. And I had to start from somewhere. But in the immediate, there was no white-collar job. So I got to the extent of joining roadside mechanics because I felt 
uh, I could start from somewhere, gain experience, get exposed, uh, and all of that. And while doing that, this job opportunity came up precisely in uh, 1986. Uh, so for a few months, I had the opportunity to do the teaching job in that uh, polytechnic. Um, it was while doing that that um, the Holy Spirit spoke to me very clearly that it was time to leave every other thing and uh, go into full-time ministry. And here it began. The 35-year-old stewardship of David Abioye in Living Faith Church worldwide under the leadership of his most reverend mentor, the president of the ministry, Dr. David O. Oyedeko. As occasion demands, if I need to teach, I study as a teacher to teach. If I need to preach, I step up by the help and the grace of God and by the available gift into the unction for preaching. If it's prophetic, I get connected to heaven. Any journey with God is always progressive, exciting, and above all, fulfilling. Uh, those who go into ministry as a means of livelihood soon get frustrated. Those who go into ministry for fame soon get disappointed and their life gets aflamed. Those who go for money end up mourning in ministry because those are things you don't uh, pursue in ministry. They are the thing that comes to you. David Abioye served in Kaduna and Meiduguri and those who knew him were always outstanding at his commitment to work and his gospel messages which transformed lives. For example, the pre 